I uh, I was gonna sit today anyway, so it's interesting that you're also sitting today. I can't do that thing with the neck. (laughs) (laughs) I was trying to see. You know how like people can move their neck where it's like it doesn't look like it's connected to their body. Oh, I remember. Yes, but I just look like a weird deranged turtle. Also true. The range turtles are known for their popularity, by the way, in many cultures. <laughs> uh, welcome, everybody. What's up, y'all? Is it Tuesday? It's got to be Tuesday. Tuesday. Say, uh, say hello in the chat box. Click some likes and such and such. Let us know you're out there. Uh, if you are interested. You're coming in very low, by the way, volume-wise. I have to ask the viewers if it's the same. Say it again. I have to ask the viewers if it's the same. I'm not sure. Because I haven't changed anything on my end. Just let me know, guys, if my audio is coming in clear, please. Hey, Jazz. What's cooking? Uh, So I just wanted to remind you guys as you're popping in here, as you're joining us for the call today. Hey, Alex. What's what's rocking? Um, that at any time, um, you'll see instructions above this video on, um, at any time, if you want to have a conversation, uh, with ourselves, uh, meaning our team about how it is that we support people with their healing, growth and developmental work. If you're interested in transformation, if you're interested in getting an alignment, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're an investor, whether you're an executive in your company, or whether you're just a stay at home mom. Uh, we all know uh, the times in our lives that we spend inside of alignment are the are the times that we see a lot of flow, a lot of things happening, a lot of joy and ease in our lives. And, and our work is all about uh, how do we not just cultivate that, but make that our, our de facto way of being. Let me change this. Our graphic is doing some weird stuff back there. Bro, I would check to make sure that you're speaking through the Yeti. It sounds like you're speaking through a farther mic. Okay, let me check that. Thank you. Check. check. Is that Yeti? Uh, that's crisp. Let me see that crisp is on Yeti. Oh, you're right. You are correct, sir. Like, you know. You're not a file. I remember I disconnected it yesterday. That's why. Yeah, it doesn't sound like your voice isn't coming in that deep, bassy, deep. sexy yeah. way, you know. Sorry. That's what I, I should make sure I'm doing the deep, sexy. Hold on. How is that? Say it again. How is that? Better. Okay. Beautiful. So sorry about that, guys. There you go. Yeah. yeah so again, uh, just above this video are instructions about how if you want to uh, learn more about the work that we're doing here. I see we're having all sorts of little issues here, so we'll change that too. Um, <clears throat> if you're interested about the work that we're doing here, you want to find out more at any time. The way to do that is again just to either say contact me in the box below, uh, or you can just go ahead and book yourself a uh, free clarity call with our team at any time Uh, (laughs) we are we're ragged today wow i just need myself yeah we are ragged today we're not getting underway well here this video clipping is just popping over and over again all right so i'm going to change that um all right with that said welcome everybody sorry about the delay here and uh last week we had a miscommunication about the topic and conversation so last week we covered kind of these three layers of consciousness, um, how to enter them and what's to be expected as you go through these different things. 
um, in, in, in attaining higher levels of consciousness, so to speak. Uh, today, we're going to talk about stress and anxiety, and maybe not in a way that you guys are accustomed to or, or used to. And before we kind of dive into that, I, I really just want to create this context of, of mastery. Every Tuesday, we do a, uh, a call with our coaches. So these are people who are, have participated in our programs for a given amount of time. They are, have showed you know, attributes to be masterful in the work and to be able to um, get results in their life, applying the work, cultivating the practices. And then they show a desire, like most people who do this work, almost everybody we have ever met that does this kind of work is extremely uh, service oriented in some way or they want to give back. And I think that's that's probably true for the whole of humanity in some way, shape, or form. Some people are just not in circumstances that they feel like they have enough room, space, energy, time, money uh, to give back. But what I have found, um, you know, there are attributes that humans have, like the need for connection, right? The desire to be loved, the desire to be accepted. And, and one of these deep desires that seems to be at the fundamental level of every human is service to others. And that... It is really inspiring, to be honest. Like, the, if that's like baked into the machine, like that's part of us. That that kind of shows you these these different aspects of ourselves that that pull us towards our evolution. And you know, serving each other is a way to serve humanity. It's to serve ourselves. It's to serve our evolution uh, and our growth. And so, I'm saying this because I have never seen anybody really, really get ahead in any area of life. And I think it's just as true for interpersonal development, um, higher states of consciousness that doesn't look at this type of work as something that they want to master. Okay. So let me say this one, one other way. If you are the type of person who's looking for what you're passionate about, like, what am I going to do with my life is what's, what's my career going to be about? Or, or maybe it's not your career. Maybe it's something you do as an offshoot. That's not your career. And, and you really want to pursue what you're passionate about the way, one of the ways that you do that is you realize if, if you don't feel like you want to master this area of your own life, you, that's probably not your passion or purpose. Okay. Because inevitably, it doesn't matter what you do, doesn't matter what you do, what you take on in your life, you are going to be dealt challenges that you did not expect well beyond what you anticipated would be things that you'd have to go through. And if you don't have that drive, that's kind of naturally there, which was naturally what happens with purpose when people find their why, you will, you will keep moving through those things in order to master that because it's that important to you. And so to us, this game of spirituality or this game of personal development or well-being, internal well-being is a lifelong pursuit for us because we, we love it, right? As many of our clients do, as many of our students do. It's our heart's work and your spiritual practice, your interpersonal spiritual practice to us, and maybe you agree or disagree, is maybe the most important thing in your life, you know, besides your your family and their well-being and stuff like that. But like truly like your purpose here is your spiritual purpose. It's like this this growth, this uh end to our interpersonal suffering, this um way of evolving ourselves into higher states of consciousness. And we are in a very fortunate type of sentient being that really has no limitations on ourselves at all because of the manner in which our mind works and how our imagination works. And so it's like, you know, it is, it is what happens when a sentient being has this level of mind that they really can evolve into anything. So just wanted to kind of put that in the background as a context. Um, I know that has very little to do with stress and anxiety and it has everything to do with stress and anxiety, right? Because it's like, if you, if you, uh, if you really want to shift your life, it is not because you're going to you're going to hear this incredible never heard before thing in your life, you know, or and you might hear that today, but it's not going to change your life until you understand that the reason Elon and I can live these practices, live this level of life. Same thing with our clients is because they're not pursuing it as a quick fix. They're not pursuing it as a start that way. It may start that way, right? But like, you know, it's the same thing with investments. Like if you get into it to make a quick buck or home business, that's a quick, quick, rich scheme. You are going to be met with a level of disappointment very quickly. <laughs> and, it, and, it's, and it's only based on how you entered the space. You know, masterful people are patient. 
and they look at things in the long term and they look at impact within themselves, but they also look at a, a wide impact, right? Like usually if you want to grow your wealth, it's because you're impacting a lot of people in some way, shape or form, even if it's a consumer good, you know, like a cell phone or whatever it might be like, it's impacting a lot of people. That's why it creates the type of ripples that it does. And that requires a certain amount of patience on your part. And also uh, understanding that you're not always going to be your best. Like <laughs> this is going to be an unpopular thing to say. And then bro, I'll throw it to you. We'll start talking about stress and anxiety here, but like our work is not about you feeling good. It's a very controversial thing to say. I think, you know, if you actually go on our homepage, you will see that we trademarked a line that says, uh, stop trying to make yourself feel better and simply get better at feeling. Right. And, and still so many people approach this work and they go, oh, I feel good. The work is working. I feel bad today. The work is not working. And using your, your feelings as a barometer of whether something feels good or whether something is working or not is the same as using the weight on the scale to find out whether you're healthy or not. It is a variable, but it is a really bad indicator. And for anybody who's ever tried to get in, in, in shape, you know that if you do daily weigh-ins, you generally give up pretty quick. <laughs> You're going to be very disappointed. Very disappointed because, again, like e even for Elon and myself, you know, we're pretty fit guys, uh, low body fat, all the things. We've been working out for, I don't know, 20 some odd years of our lives. And I could tell you, like, still, if I get on the scale and I, and I look at it and go, oh, like my weight can fluctuate five pounds on any given day based on water retention, food, you name it, level of activity. I'm going to have a certain feeling about myself. But the moments that I've been in the best shape of my life, I've, I have known nothing about my weight, nothing about any of those things, because it's, it's not a good indicator. And we are learning this through nutrition science and health science. It's like, this has been a very, very bad indicator for health. In fact, yeah. right. It's different bodies, different things. So I want to, again, just create this kind of context for this conversation because stress and anxiety has a lot to do with these things that I'm naming today and how to cultivate a life that is not about getting rid of stress and anxiety. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's learning what's the purpose of stress and anxiety. What role does it play in my life? What is it actively trying to teach me? And then in those moments, how do I work with it? Because that's what we really want to learn. We don't want to learn about how to manage or cope our, with our emotions. We want to learn it's here now. We can investigate the why it's here now, but that's all going to be conjecture and story on how your brain shapes reality. So that that is not even that important. What we really want to learn is when it's here, now what? Now that it's here, now what? Because if you think you are going to become or create a life that is devoid of stress or anxiety at any scale, no, no matter how much money or how much joy or how many things you have or how much safety you created in your life, like inevitably this part of you is still going to seep in and is still going to once in a while come in with these really overwhelming experiences. And so that's kind of how I wanted to open the space today. I'm going to give you guys two things to write down right away. The first one is called best shape of you best shape no best sorry best shape of my life mm -hmm. is the first one it's on youtube the second one is will which is will smith's new memoir both of them are will smith start with best shape of you uh best shape of my life wow i keep saying best shape of you best shape of my life start with that on youtube get your juices flowing get excited and then go read the book <laughs> and um, it will give you an unbelievably great understanding of what guy's talking about right now from a level of mastery. Uh, I don't know about you guys. I'm so obsessed with Will Smith have been for a long, long time, but like, I don't know that there's a person that one could argue against pursuing mastery at a level that Will Smith has. Like, it's just, it's unarguable with, right? And Best Shape of My Life is going to give you a really interesting look into what that looks like. Uh, and the other side of it, which is like, 
you know, Grammy winning artist, uh, Oscar nominated, will hopefully win the Oscar this year for King Richard, um, has an, a dream life, dream family, you know, wants for nothing. And yet you can see the level of stress, anxiety, uh, bouts with depression, like all of it. So I just think self-doubt, it, it's a good reality check for us. We somehow think like, oh, when I have this much money, like my life will turn out. No, the same shit that you have now will just be enhanced, different. right? Yeah, like it, it's like everything, everything that you are as life expands, expands with you. <laughs> so how many of you guys have tried to uh, get out of a relationship by like running to a different city, state or country only to find out that in your next relationship in Colombia, it's the same exact situation. I always tell people, it's like, you can go on a jet plane wherever you want to go to think, to run away from your problems. And even though the baggage that you have comes on a slow boat, it's going to catch up with you. Like you can't dump it on the way of your flight. Like it just doesn't happen. And so to guy's point, it's not about whether it's going to stop. It's not about trying to slow it down. It's not about trying to manage your life in a way where you're not going to deal with it. You're going to deal with it. And whether you have a decade or 50 or 100 left or 10 decades left, whatever, you know, however many years you have left, like you'd be wise to invest your time and energy into actually learning not how to manage the responses, but actually look at underneath that, what is the root core parts that keep getting triggered that are creating that stress and anxiety in your life? Yeah. Right. So that's what we're going to have a conversation about today. <clears throat> and so can I jump in here? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, something I, I would, I want to just offer here is like, again, instead of trying to, well, here's a few things. Number one, it's like, what if we stopped thinking in terms of a single lifetime and we started really thinking of, of ourselves in, in lifetimes, right? Because what, what you really are, that which you really are, which is not this body, is the awareness and this consciousness. And our programs, what they do is we point at this awareness and consciousness that you are. Why? So you can experience your true nature. Okay? Because everything that you've attached to this body and everything you've attached to this identity and ego, it may be functional or it may be dysfunctional, but it's still not you. you some of you guys have really, really successful identities and egos and, and you, you don't have to get rid of any of that stuff. That's not the point here but it's still not who you are. And there might be something underneath all that that's so much more magnificent than you ever imagined. And so we want to kind of start getting away from this idea that we're here to like create resolution. Well, two things, sorry, let me just back up a step. Why is that important? Why? Because there is now, you can settle into a level of patience that most people don't have because they feel like they have a limited amount of time to play with. And that creates this compression in the system when we think this way. You know, like, for instance, um, what's his face? The uh, super famous investor. His name skips me right now. Warren Buffett. Yes, thank you. So, you know, Warren Buffett, you know how Warren Buffett became Warren Buffett? He's not the best investor in the world. He only invests in about 10 things. What the reason Warren Buffett has made so much money is he had started investing no shit at 10 years old. And any investor that's usually making a lot of money will tell you that the portfolio is boring, they're very patient, and it's taken a long time to build that wealth. Most of Warren Buffett's wealth was developed, I think, in the last 10 years. I think like 90% of his wealth was developed from the last 10 years and from like, you know, very, very few investments. And when we look across most things, like when things make a lot of money, it's usually very few things that are doing it. And it, it was a long term patient plan. All right. So like, what did Warren Buffett actually master? He mastered compounding. That's it. He just understood compounding at a really young age, put money in and let it grow. And so he's had 
probably two or three more decades of compounding than most investors in a single lifetime. So you want to think of your, your spirituality in the same way. It's like your growth and your awareness, this infinite expanse of, your, of yourself that you're trying to awaken or become awakened to also has this compounding effect. But if you want to see that compounding effect, you better spend a lot more time in your awareness and in your energy so that it can compound. And then, and then, and then life will be become much more reflective of that. So another shift here we can make is instead of looking like, how do I resolve everything that's happening in my life? How do I change it and transform it and shift it? And that's important language for people because like some of the stuff I'm telling you guys about here, it's pretty advanced. It's like, what if instead of trying to resolve it, your focus was on how to become more fluid? Okay. What do I mean by that? Well, that means energetically fluid, okay? Like, I want you to think when, when you, t- you take a material that's very viscous, that's like thick, right? Like, it, that's kind of how people's bodies are. They're stiff, they sit a lot, they're not stretching very often, they're not moving. The energy is stagnant in the body and the mind creates more stagnation on top of that. And so when an experience comes, like a stress response or anxiety or overwhelm, it's, it's as if the you're, it's literally getting locked into the system. And so the system is viscous and lacks fluidity. But if the system was opened, had a lot of channels, open channels, so to speak, and the energy just came and then was fluidly moving through, the experience doesn't last very long. And there's also uh, an ability to like embrace what's occurring in the moment versus trying to fight against it. So like if you're in a fight with what's going on, it's a great, great pointer that, there's no fluidity in the system. It's so this energy gets stuck and then you start dealing with it from a level of psychology, trying to almost like negotiate with it. Like you're negotiating with the terrorism that's suddenly the terrorist that's suddenly here. And you're like, I need you to go. And it's like, Nope. And it just, and it just digs in more. So what we really want to start focusing on is how do we create this fluidity? And I'd love to pass it over to you. If you can kind of uh, maybe begin describing what some of that might look like for people. <clears throat> the fluidity piece or I mean like anything that pings for you that you want to take it with but yeah I'd, I'd love to kind of I don't know that that's a common thing for people to talk about um, so I'd love to just explore that a little bit more with you yeah I mean for me I, I, I'll just share right now for those that uh, don't know uh, my entire family uh, got COVID here uh, last week so you can imagine that there's a, a response right in the system that comes with that. I'm not even talking on the physiological level, but like on a what now kind of that, that thing that we've all been uh, worried about. And even inside of that, I think because of the work that you and I have been doing for so long, And I was able to actually see it this time. Uh, we had that session with with Andrew and our uh, L4 group. Mm-hmm. And uh, our coach had said something like, um, bow to the divine part inside of you. And I got to see this part inside of me that even while I was, you know, like my body was resting on a, on a mattress and I was kind of like on my side with my eyes closed and just kind of resting and taking this meditation in, I found this part inside and he was glowing, like glowing, like a light and healthy and beautiful. And I got to see the part of us, like the eternal part that guy's talking about, the part that comes into bodies time and time again to have the the experience quote unquote of life and he wasn't sick he was unfazed by what was happening to the body and i got to see that part that we have cultivated a relationship with right and and that part is intuitive it it provides me with answers when i sit in silence and and communicate uh it in it constantly highlights different aspects of myself that I get to look at and explore. 
And I think what you were pointing to is this notion that when we feel stress or when we feel anxiety or when we feel any sort of discomfort, let's just call it that, that only happens because there's something that is wanting to be seen, felt, processed, and healed. We talk about this all the time, like you don't notice your head until you have a headache. You don't notice, you don't notice your toe until you stub your toe. You don't notice your finger until you hurt your finger, right? Like it takes something to witness something and your body, the way the body communicates, it doesn't have words, right? So it's going to communicate with sensations. Some of those sensations you really like most of those sensations you really don't like. And so stress and anxiety is, are these big thrown around terms like, Oh, I suffer from anxiety. I suffer. Okay, great. That's like a big, bold statement, you know, but it doesn't point you to anything. What's the sensation? If you, if you took away the label, right? Like think in the moment of something uh, that is impacting you right now. Just like think about any situation that is, that is difficult or stressful right now. And it doesn't take more than a few seconds for you to bring into your mind's eye. And if you actually start to notice and, and move your awareness into your body, you can actually start to become aware of maybe a, a pinch or a poke or a prod or a sharp pain or a squeezing or something. And that, that might be check out your stomach, check out your solar plexus, check out your heart, maybe even your throat. Just feel like where do you feel a level of tension? And if you can feel it, that is your body's way of communicating that it is wanting some sort of awareness placed on it in a specific spot. And it's this spot, these places of tension are not new. Just because your boss is triggering it now, this was something that created when you were living with your dad when you were three years old. And it's been the same exact thing what we do is though we create different strategies and management styles to avoid it. Some of us use food, some of us use drugs, some of us use alcohol, some of us use cigarettes, some of us use exercise, some of us use blah, 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 fill in the blank. You know what your vice is. Every time you do that, you're basically turning away from and going out there to try to stop or numb this feeling. And all this feeling wants to do is to be met. Now, the reason that you haven't been able to meet it is because you've never received guidance, what we call a template on how to actually meet these parts because you didn't have parents or teachers or mentors or guides that actually showed you simple strategies on how to be able to not turn out, but turn in. And so turning in becomes this really, really scary thing. And it's only scary because the mind has convinced you that in here is going to be really dark and painful. And that is because you've touched it at times through the mind. And I was like, uh, uh, no, uh, we're not doing that. No, 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 not touching that. And that, that essence of the mind looking down and going, this is not good. This is not good. That is what's actually triggering your stress or your anxiety or your overwhelm or whatever the other blanket things that we label it. Now, what if I told you that it's been scary? I get that. Trust me, we've been there. I get that it's been scary. And... It's only been scary because you've been doing it a very specific way. 
what if I told you that there are ways and like there are plenty of people on here that can chime in that have witnessed aspects of themselves that they never thought that they would ever be able to touch or witness. And they've done it from a place of safety. What if every time you actually felt a pinch or a poke or a prod or a tightening, you knew exactly what your nervous system was needing in order to release that energy and then just move on through your day. Hey, Joe Messina, I spoke to your beautiful wife today. Mm -hmm. We, this work is about remembering things that are very innate to you. They're not mm -hmm. difficult. These are not new things that you need to learn. These are not new practices that take tremendous amount of effort and time. And look, Guy and I, one of the things that I think we're really good at is we weed through all the stuff that's out there. We simplify and we make it very, very practical. Like you can show up to one of our programs and within one session, you're going to have something. I think I saw Alex uh, Morrissey on here, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and <clears throat> Alex just wrote, Alex just started our level one training program, uh, which is uh, the, the first place that we introduce people into. And like within the first call was like, oh my God, just that first session was just like mind bending. Why? Because we've done 20 years of work and like we can guide people into like what actually matters. So at the end of the day, this is what, what's on offer. Whether you just come to the Tuesdays with us live, whether you come to any of our programs, just know that like the promise here always is everything that's shared here is not about you managing your life and trying to get to this mythical happy place. It's not like that's not what we're about here. There's plenty of other people that can sell you a bunch of programs and, you know, this 12 step, 14, non whatever process. My experience of all of those like things has been that they work in the beginning, you get very excited, and then there's a law of diminishing returns because your life is in a constant state of expansion. And the things that trigger you now will seem meaningless in a year. And those things will be huge. And whatever you're learning now, chances are a year from now is not going to hold water. Because it's more about managing and overcoming and getting through and all that kind of stuff. What if you took a step back and actually invested in a willingness for a much bigger, longer game? And that bigger, longer game is a bigger, longer game in a willingness to no matter what, keep looking inwards and knowing that you have comfort and safety to look inwards because it's not the big, dark, scary world that your mind has told you it is. There's a beauty in here that is the greatest beauty like truly awe-inspiring, magical beauty. And the beauty with this practices is that the more you do it, the better the work becomes. Mm -hmm. The more, like the more sits you have and the more practices and the more you open your system, the more you're able to catch the trigger in the moment that it's arising. Like, like it's literally like bubbling and you're already on it. You're with it. You're with it. So it's like literally like arising and you're already here because you have so much access that it doesn't ever get to the place of stress or anxiety. It's like watching. It's the difference of being being the person in like, you know, when you watch a movie, you can watch like a really, really sad movie. But it's not the same as you being that sad person in the movie. 
You're you're the subject, not the ob- you're the subjective subjective watcher, not the object experiencing. Correct. And, te- and, so and technically, you- and technically, you're both because you've also you've been that object at some point in your life as well, right? Yeah. And now, it's, so it's like you, and that's the beauty with. Uh, sorry, bro, to kind of gank it, but uh, that's the beauty with awareness is that awareness allows us to realize the paradox of ourselves is that we are both the subject and the object watching the subject in our lives. And that's the power of cultivating awareness is that you can always be the watcher and the experiencer. And then, and what's beautiful about that is you start appreciating more of both. You start appreciating more the experiences, the depth of your emotion, the depth of your sadness, the depth of your anger, the depth of your love, because the deeper you go into any emotion, the deeper all the emotions go. But the moment we get into this conflation where we think like, well, I just want to be happy. I just want to be this. And like, it's this very narrow field of emotions that we've allowed. And it's not because you made those decisions that that's what you want it to be. That is the reflection we get from society. Yeah. That is the reflections we've gotten from our lineage. That is the reflection we've gotten from schools, from religions, right? It's like, there's a good way to be and there's a bad way to be. Don't be this way. Don't feel this way. Don't express this way. And guess what? A human exudes those things because they're innate them right that is that is the nature and the more we turn away from those things the less that we are with it and the more that it has us yeah the more that it hijacks our system because every single thing that we turn away from it's just like it's just like humans out there you know whatever side of the issues you're on where whether it's politics or what's happening in the world right now or what's happening with covid or vaccines the moment you dig in on a position the other side digs in more as well if it's true out here, it's true in here. The things that you turn away from, the things that you are against inside of yourself, they dig in their heels and they and they go harder into that. And so there's there's no resolution in standing against something, even in, in standing against yourself. And a lot of the things you stand in against yourself, you're not even aware of. Because mostly when you're against something, you deal you deal with it out here in the world. You see that other people have those characteristics and then you try to deal with them as if resolving it out here is going to resolve it in here. But all you've really done and all you're really experiencing is every aspect of yourself you've turned away from. And so naturally, if you're not going to deal with it within, you're going to try to deal with it without. Yeah. And so I want to um, maybe do a like we've never done this before, but like if you guys are interested why don't we take 10 minutes here and do a sit together? Cause we have a community here and we can work with some aspect of yourself. Cause I'm sure there's something right in your life right now that's causing you stress. So how many of you guys would be interested in doing, uh, I'll do like a short awareness based meditation practice here for 10 minutes. We can sit together and you can get a, a glimpse of this work that we're talking about. So yeah. if I get enough, if I get a bunch of yeses in the chat box, we'll, we'll do that. Okay. By the way, I don't know what they fixed on Restream, but do you notice how much, like the delay ha- must have been massively shortened? Yeah, you can also pin messages now, which is nice. No, but so, you know how we like, like usually like we will ask a question and it's like 15 seconds yeah. to see it over there. Now it's like, yeah, meta. Uh, so I want to just, you know, this is from, from Alex that uh, Elon was talking about that recently joined our L1. And so look, what Elon is, is pointing to is that we can, uh, we can, Start experiencing, not dealing, experiencing life in real time without having to apply psychological models to it, okay? Because this is what we've all been accustomed to and trained. If something's wrong in my life, let me figure out what's happening. Let me figure out why it's happening and let me devise some kind of solution. And I just want you to just notice for a moment, like take 15 seconds, like how much energy you put towards trying to resolve problems inside and outside of yourself. It's, it's it's exhausting. I feel exhausted just, just feeling into that. And mostly when we have problems within, we don't see them as inside problems. We don't, They're not problems like this experience of tension or something that doesn't feel good or whatever it might be. We don't see it here. We're just like, what do I got to change out there to make myself feel better? We are obsessed with the way that we feel. Instead of being obsessed with just feeling, we're obsessed with the way that we feel. What if you just became obsessed with feeling? Like it just arose and you could surrender into it. And just like Elon said, a sad movie, an angry movie, a happy movie. You were the, you were that, which is watching that, experiencing that and embracing that fully. And that's, and I'm telling you right now, that's what this experience is going to be. This may open a door for you. 
this may open a door that scares you. This may open a door that makes you sad. This may open a door that brings laughter and joy into your life that you had no idea was even there. Because mm. some of us are so afraid of our joy because we were told not to be too prideful. Don't be too egotistical. Don't let people know your wins. Like how many of you guys grew up in that kind of culture? Like Elon and I grew up in a culture where it's like our parents used to tell us that good things were happening in the family. And then the next thing they would say is, but don't tell anybody. Right. And so there, there, like there is a healthy ego. There is a healthy pride. Those things actually exist. These are not enemies. <laughs> if it's baked in, it's baked in. You can't get rid of it. So what we want to look at is how do we work with it? So I, I see we got lots of yeses. Lots of yeses. And I put Alex's quick message up there. I put it again. I just say it. like, yes, looking through the lens of the mind is skewing the message. Yes, 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 yes. A hundred percent, 150 percent. Yes. Your mind is conditioned. Billions, probably trillions of neuronal connections are exist in there how they got connected and under what pretense they got connected. The story is a meaning making story making machine full stop. And it's not interested in you healing. Like that's, you know, that was the big revelation for us. Uh, when we, when we realized like as powerful as mindset is that it, it too has limitations. I'm sure the work that we're doing now, maybe come back to us in 10 years, maybe we'll find limitations for this too. But like, the mind doesn't want you to go exploring that which is within. And that's why it's going to convince you to keep staying out here. It's going to keep convincing you that no, 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 no. We can just, we can do this seminar. We can, we can just read this book. We can just watch this video. We can just talk to this person because you'll notice that there's certain teachings, maybe even us that scare you a little <laughs> like to say yes to doing this work will scare you a little. And I've spoken to many, many, many of you as like, you've made the choice to say yes to this because your heart is going to pull you full stop. Yes. Into this work. And then the mind is going to scream a million reasons why you should not do this work because it knows it intuitively knows that the second you say yes, that means that this power, and the structure that it has created to keep you in this safe little bubble is about to burst in a big, big way. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't know what happens when this bubble bursts. It now is going to be into uncharted, unknown territories, into a world that it has no language or distinctions around. Could you get how scary that is for the mind? So just know that, like, that's what it's doing constantly. It's like keeping you, it's like a bumper rail right that's like keeping you away from the gutter all right let's do this yeah i just want to say one quick thing that was like a realization i had is like the mind doesn't have eyes and yet it sees you know like it like the mind like it uses the eyes but it is not an organ that has eyes it's not like our liver is down there like looking at stuff and whether or not you had function of your eyes your mind would see it would create pictures it would create stories. And so I'm saying this because it's, it's, a, it's a way to investigate the mind. And putting awareness on your mind is an incredible way to heal it, by the way. Because otherwise, it, the only where people look at mind from is from their mind. Instead of going into a higher state of awareness or consciousness, call it what you will, and observing the mind. So let's do that. That's what we're going to do right here. Okay, And it's not as hard as you think. So I want you to get rid of this idea that stepping into higher states of consciousness is hard. All we're going to do here, and I'm going to walk you through a very simple process, is we are going to unlocalize your awareness from where it's normally localized, and then something will happen. Okay? So I want you to get comfortable. And if you're excited, you can just type, I'm excited. <laughs> <clears throat> and then just... Close your eyes and just take a few calming breaths so you feel a little bit more present. And the breath is a way to let our body know that we're safe right now. That's what, that's what the breath is about. 
when you breathe deep, you're, you're, it's, you're, you're sending a message to your body and your mind that right now in this moment, we're safe. Because when you're not feeling safe, when you're anxious, when you're scared, when you're running around, you never breathe this way. So this is a way to just let your nervous system know, let your body know, let your mind know that here in this room that I'm in, I'm safe. And if you're still not feeling safe as you do that, open your eyes and look around the room that you're in and just look around the room with your eyes and verify to yourself that you're safe. Even look under your chair, even if there's a wall or a closet behind you, look that they look behind you and just, and then close your eyes again once you've done that. And then again, just ask yourself if you feel safe in this moment. Whatever is happening or has happened before in the past is not happening right now. Okay. And so I want you to notice that your awareness sits usually behind your eyes. Like when you ask people where they are, they point at their heads. And what they're really pointing to, they're saying, my awareness is here. And that's the conditioning is that you've been conditioned to place your awareness behind your eyes. And so you experience the world from that level of mind. And so I'm going to ask you, this is just to play with, no right or wrong, just to play with, is to bring your awareness around your head. And if that's confusing to you, just bring your awareness to a few inches in front of your face. And then bring your awareness to the right hand side of your head, like to you know a few inches away from the right ear. And then bring your awareness, once you got that, bring your awareness a few inches away from the back of your head. There you go. I can feel you going there. Beautiful. And then bring your awareness to the left side, so a few inches to the left ear. Almost like we're building a, a halo of awareness around our head. And if you're struggling with this, it's okay. We have other other means to get out of here, but I just want to be mindful of everyone's time. So I'm kind of going to go through this a little faster than usual. And so once you have that awareness around your head, this like halo, see if you can just let it expand out so that your awareness is further away from, from the mind. And farther away is not necessarily better just allowing for that awareness to expand out and away from the head. And that might be just a few inches for some of you, a few feet. And for some of you guys, you go full galactic when this, when you do this practice. So you might be flying through space. What I do want you to notice is that there's an aspect of you usually that is trying to effort moving into the space. So see if you can notice the part of you that's efforting, that's trying hard or putting some effort into this and then see if you can let the effort go or at least decrease the effort and see if you can notice that your awareness is not something that requires effort. It's more of an orienting into like orienting to somewhere in space or resting into type of experience. So like I can easily orient my awareness to Venus right now or Mars and as I just use the power of intention, there is my awareness on Venus or Mars. It didn't take any effort for me to get there. I just am. I just am because I intend to be. So see if that is helpful in finding space around your head and then just allowing for it to expand as it chooses to expand. And so see it, even if being here, just in a little bit of spaciousness, non-localized awareness, you can start noticing that there is an impact and a shift in perception. I will give it some qualitative names to guide you into if you don't know what I'm talking about. First, you might feel like it's more restful. You may also notice that this might feel like a void, like an empty space. 
you might be experiencing a kind of buoyancy here. A lot of people will uh, say that they notice like a white, like a white kind of quality to it, like a white light kind of quality to it. And so just for contrast, because we learn from contrast, let go of the awareness and now localize, like bring the awareness all the way back towards your mind. Like let it, let it just go where it normally is. As if you're looking through your eyes, you can keep your eyes closed. Yeah, there you go. And notice as you come back towards your mind that it almost feels as if there's more density. Like a, a hardness, a stuckness, the buoyancy and restfulness goes away. You might even start feeling tension in your nervous system if you're really tuning in. So I won't keep you here too long. And again, just for contrast, now come back out into the space around your head, like that halo, and expand back out again. Yeah, there you go. Whew. And see again if you can notice now that it's less dense. And again, restfulness. Your body might start feeling more relaxed. And I want to offer you that this already is a higher state of consciousness and an altered state of consciousness which we can call a non-localized spacious mind. Okay. Now see if you can maintain this view and then just perceive anything in life right now that you deem is stressful. You may not even have to name it. Just me saying, thinking about stress or intending stress, something in your body is going to start shifting. Like for me, as I say that, there's a squeezing in my stomach that immediately starts. I'm not even present to where what the stress is or what in my life is causing the stress, but because I'm intending, my body is rea reacting. It's that simple and it's that fast. So if you can kind of split your awareness, like hold it out here in the spaciousness as we're doing, and then from that view, almost like turn and look down at the center channel of your body. So we're looking from the top of the head all the way down to the tailbone, kind of like where the spinal cord is. And what you're looking for, generally speaking, I would say look at the throat, like investigate your throat, investigate your heart, investigate your stomach, and see if you can find any sort of point of tension, okay? And if there's a like a really clear point of tension, it could be like a squeezing, a compression, a pressure, a discomfort, Pulsing, a bubbling. Yeah, anything like that that's just drawing your awareness to it, I would just go right you there. Even, you might even feel like a really loud heartbeat in your stomach or something. Something like that, yeah. So for me, uh, I'm noticing at the bottom right of my stomach, it's like a, like almost like a sharp pain. And as I name it, it's moving a little bit more towards my right hip. And there's some pressure around my solar plexus right now. My stomach feels like someone like blew up a balloon and it's trying to come out the top left side of my stomach. There you go. I'm noticing heat around my heart. And if you're not noticing any of this, I don't want you to make yourself wrong. Elon and I have been practicing subtle awareness from spaciousness for five years now, straight on a daily basis. It is a cultivated practice. There is a world of subtle energy and awareness that 99.99% of the human population is not aware of that can enrich your life in ways that are again, unknown to 99.99% of the population right now that we're just starting to come into awareness with. And so sometimes what you feel is numbness and just empty space. And I want you to know that for a lot of people, that is the sensation they begin with. Numbness is not an absence of sensation. Numbness is the sensation. And so wherever you are in your system, obviously I can't get feedback from you right now. Here's my, here's my little bit of coaching for you is notice that you may be resisting 
that experience and that tension. There's and, and even if it's not you, there's a part of you that's like, uh oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. Yeah, it's like, I don't like that. That doesn't make me feel good. And so there's like a turning away from that Elon mentioned. And it's not like you're choosing it. It's just a, it's just happening. So in this moment, see if you can permission whatever is happening just a little bit more. Like I permission this. And trust me that your body is, is not going to fight against you. It's not going to do too much. Your body is always going to move and release in the exact order, timing, sequence, and pressure that's healthy for your system. You literally are your own healer. You are your own drug. And your body knows exactly what to do, how to do it, what sequence, what order, and what timing. And it doesn't matter what the mind wants, how it wants it, when it wants it, what experience it wants. The body's does not work that way. So I'm just going to be quiet here for a minute. And I'm just going to let you, again, holding the spaciousness around your head. So if you've gone back into a localized awareness, see if you can come back out. Yeah, there you go. So maybe guys, that's helpful for you. And then again, noticing the part in your system and we're not trying to resolve it. We're not trying to get rid of it. We're not trying to understand it. We're just observing as if you're watching a movie that's unfolding inside of yourself. And you're lightly curious. Just bringing light curiosity to this part. That's it. Now, depending on the fluidity of your system and the timing of this, it can shift and move rather rapidly, or this can actually require quite a bit of your presence with it for quite some time before it's ready to fully release. The beauty of our body and our soul is that it is massively intelligent. Look at the way everything is structured in the universe. It's hard to deny that there's some kind of intelligence. And so if that intelligence exists at any scale, it exists at every scale, meaning that that intelligence is part of that intelligence. Your body knows how to bring itself to a neutral state and heal itself. What's required for that is coming to a more relaxed, down-regulated nervous system, which is another way to say, bring yourself to neutral. Einstein um, has a, a theory that he developed a long time ago about zero point energy, same thing. We're bringing your body to a zero point energy through awareness itself. And then we're just watching and allowing for the body to go through its divine intelligence, same way that it fixes a cut on your finger, same way that women get pregnant without any feedback, same way a bone mends itself. Your psychological feedback is unnecessary for a healing process to occur. In fact, it gets in the way. What we really want to learn is to how, how to view from an agendaless view, so the body can just do what it needs to do. The moment you bring an agenda, it stops working. Awesome. So of course we are limited by time today. And whatever, whatever you noticed or didn't notice from today's experience, that's what there is to notice. What I want to point out for you, if you can just kind of bring, bring some of your awareness back here. I know you can get a little spacey and floaty. I'll do my best too, because I'm a little bit in a state now too. What I want to point out is that there is a qualitative difference 
that we can begin noticing, even if it's just a glimpse for a moment, that shifting from a localized mind to an unlocalized mind has an impact on, on ourselves, on how we perceive, on our ability to observe and perceive what's happening in our system, and perhaps even permission something that's wanting your awareness to connect with it, that it simply will not move if you will view it from mind. Viewing from mind is viewing from your conditioning. When you watch conditioning from conditioning, you just get more conditioning. Yeah, Clara was saying, you know, I'll just put this up for you guys. Like this can have profound healing effects on people, profound healing effects. And if it didn't, if you didn't have a, oh, oh my goodness impact, like, but you'd be surprised how little it takes for people to start healing, truly healing. So we'll leave it at that for today. And again, I want to remind you, if you're interested in this level of work, you know, we, we have our a level one training, which does deal with the mindset and understanding how this mechanics and machinery works. Because if you don't really understand how this mind works, it, it's going to take you for rides. That's what's just so. And if you don't know you're on a ride, you don't know how to get off. It's just like, if you don't know you're in a matrix, how do you unplug? And we are all in a matrix. But when you start understanding how it is that this perceives things, you can pull yourself out of that. And so that's an important aspect of transformation. And then beyond that is starting to step into the awareness and energy work that almost every therapy that we've ever been introduced to across planet Earth uh, is lacking. They don't, they don't teach that aspect of it. And so when you take talk therapy, psychological therapies, and you include energy and awareness, you are going to start seeing a baffling amount of movement and healing in your system, okay, in your, in your life as well. So if you are interested in learning more about how to join our programs, how to apply into them, it's very, very simple, guys. You can either just say, uh, contact me in the chat box below. Even if you're watching this on replay, we scour them and, and, and our team, Nikki, Corey, will reach out to you, have a conversation with you, uh, get a little information from you, see what your goals are, see where you are in your, in your growth experience. And they'll let you know, like, if this is a good fit for you. And then if it is, you know, whether we think you're a good fit for these programs as well. And here's the pathway uh, in order to join these programs to start participating. And we have a full Ascension model here from level one all the way up to level four. But our, our entryway is level one. It's extremely, uh, um, it's a low barrier to entry. You get a ton for your investment. And we really want to put our money where our mouth is and prove to you that the work that we're doing here is profound in nature. And then you can choose for yourself whether or not you want to continue down that path. Just so you know, if you do join level one, it also includes a uh, two-day live experience with Elon and myself, okay? It also includes six weeks of live coaching with one of our coaches and the curriculum itself is mind blowing. And anybody who's been through it that wants to share, you feel free to put that in the chat box. Your other option is to just go to uh, callsatori.com and actually just book a 15 minute, uh, free 15 minute clarity call with our team. We do take a little information from you because um, we want to get as much information as we can. So that 15 minutes is both useful for you uh, and for our team. That'll take you probably three or four minutes to fill out total. And those are, those are your entry points into uh, getting into this world, getting deeper into this work, and really starting to cultivate this level of awareness um, and healing that we are talking about. All right, guys, if you have any questions, of course, always let us know. Thank you for your uh, attention and awareness today. Thanks for uh, going through this fun process with us. We love you very much, and uh, we will see you next week. I will um, play you guys out with a testimonial. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, just uh, mention that the prices are going up for everything. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So uh, come January 1st, our prices on all our programs are going up. And I'm telling you right now, level one is going to be double the price that it is right now. So if you want to participate in this work and get in, you can save yourself a boatload of money by, um, you know, looking at whether you want to enroll in the next few weeks here. Um, and then, you know, don't worry about the rest of it. We've that those are conversations for a later period of time. Really right now you want to determine, do I want to do this work? If it's a yes, uh, we will help you figure it out. Even if you feel like financially you can't do that. Although again, I'm telling you level one is, is extremely cost efficient. Um, but again, we, what Elon and I really care about is, are you committed to doing this work? 
we will jump through hoops for you to figure out how to make it work financially for you. Really doesn't matter what financial level you're at. We've had people at every scale from literally almost billionaires to people who are, no joke, homeless and in their car do this work. Okay. So uh, that that's our promise too. Is like if you are a yes in your system, we will help you navigate and figure out how to be in these programs and works. That's what we just want to know is like we want really committed, open people, obviously, you know, that's more fun for us to work with. Um, and again, we'll be able to determine that by going through these application processes with our team and figuring out again, if it's a good fit for you. And we'll tell you straight up, if it's not a good fit for you, uh, we'll, we'll offer you something else and like go read this book, go take this course, go do something else. Okay. Um, I will play you guys out with a testimonial reel, uh, especially if you're new, so you can kind of get the sense of the vastness of experiences that people have here. And a lot of these testimonials are just from the two day event. So these are people who just did this work intensely for two days. Um, and yeah, that's that. We'll see you guys next week. We love you lots. Happy holidays. Stay safe, stay healthy. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. You put words to something that is inexplicable. How do you try to convey other than I hope the energy and the love you can feel coming through this, like how amazing and cracked open I feel. How after a life's journey of traumas and bliss and books and self-development and walking the Camino de Santiago, which was 800 kilometers in 33 days of meditation and being connected to, to earth and interacting with other pilgrims for all over the world. What an amazing experience that was. That changed me, but I can't tell you how much more two days um, with all these beautiful souls online in this event, how much more that even cracked me open, how, how that did crack me open, uh, finally cracked me open. The deep-seated feelings of well-being, of connection, those aha moments, going into this with no expectations, with my heart open, uh, it's, it's life-altering. Um, I sort of equate it to being when you first fall in love with someone and how blissful that is and everything's great and wonderful and that you know it's the honeymoon period but this is not that this is the honeymoon period with yourself which is never going to end i cannot stress enough how much this is actually easy as they had said um come if you're called come if you're engaged my experience i can tell you is not atypical it's extremely typical for those that open up and feel this connection together can you do things on your own? Absolutely. Can you do things one-on-one -on -one with coaches? Fabulously. Can you, I get chills saying this, can you grow in leaps and bounds when you connect with a large group of like-minded souls, the energy between us all, the love, that deep-seated feeling of wellness and connection. You're not alone. You're here for a reason. Nothing's a coincidence. Like it just all clicks and becomes this most beautiful experience. I hope for any of you that are remotely called to do this, that you will seek these people out, this organization out, this love out, because it's there for you. It's that easy. I went to their two day event this last weekend and it's just been such a phenomenal growth in my path. I felt like it's exactly what I've been asking for. Um, I had this amazing ability to really truly come inside myself, listen, so easy. I've been, quote, trying for years, but I think that was part of the problem. I was trying too hard. And um, when they mentioned just without effort, it almost gave me the permission to just literally feel and drop in and allow, allow whatever was coming up. And in their meditations and in their deep energetic work, I felt so much that it was, it was shocking to me. And I've been able to continue throughout the last few days since the event. And I'm just, I'm just so grateful. Um, I'm currently in some challenging times and I feel like that was the missing piece. I've been trying to do it from my mind and not knowing how to really deeply go into my body and feel and heal. And that process was unleashed during this event and I'm 
continuing it. And I'm just, I'm so amazed at how easy and how effortless it really is. Been on a path of embodiment for many years. Um, lots of self-awareness and personal growth, but it's like that wasn't enough. I felt stuck and I knew and I felt that there was a lot of stuck energy and, you know, past pain and in my body and I didn't know how to touch it even with all the different modalities I've done. Um, this is a missing piece that I've been asking the universe to show me and when the student is ready, the teachers appear and that's what has happened and I'm excited to work with Guy and Elan some more and um, I'd encourage anybody who's thinking about this in this work event in the future to consider it um, because it's really powerful, powerful, deep transformational work. Thank you. I just experienced the second two day intensive with Guy and Elon and Satori Prime, and it's overwhelming. Um, the number one thing is the support. Two, and I said this on day one of the two day, the abundance of honesty that comes out of this work is in and of itself medicine, honest with yourself, honest with listening to other people and their stories, not taking it in to a point where it affects you, but taking it into a point where it allows you to feel and to move through it with them and within yourself. And that's what this program does. I, at least it has for me. And to feel all of the feels and to not be afraid of them and to have the support when you wanna turn around and walk away, they say no. You don't have to. They don't tell you you can't, but they tell you you don't have to. And in doing so, it opens up so much more. The field of energy that was coming through on day two was so overwhelming that when my other half walked in to give me some news regarding one of my stressors, I didn't see him. I saw the energy and I saw the emotion and I felt it and I knew it. And I was so protected and so safe that that moment alone was worth all the weight in gold. This is a, a powerful thing. I can see it changing my life in good ways in ways that I still question and in ways that I want to still question. Thank you to the entire Satori Prime family. Thank you. I'm better today than I was yesterday. I was better yesterday than I was two months ago when I signed up for round one. And I can't wait to see where this journey takes me and us together because I know that we're gonna be better a month from now, a year from now, because we're doing the work. So, thank you. Mwah. So I've been trying to find what happened to me that day and the new traumatic experiences just kept happening to me. And it felt like each one, the next would be more extreme than the last. Um, it didn't matter how many books I read, how much I prayed, how much I meditated. I went to counseling. I still am in counseling. I've been going to counseling my whole life. Um, I had a life coach. I'm actually training to become a life coach as well. Working out, vision boards, affirmations, you name it, I did it. I wanted to know all about it, but it didn't help me stop my cycles. In that second meditation, I've come to aware that I took all of those moments for granted. 
Um, and that was sad. And it was probably a really big disappointment to look at myself like that, that I have all of these beautiful days that I'm wasting and I could be present for them all. Not only for myself, but for, for a lot of people out there. Sorry. No, I'm not actually. <laughs> I'm supposed to feel that. I'm gonna allow that in. Every experience can be different. It truly was a pivotal moment for me of where there was before this experience and after it. And I know that it's only catapulted me to only further my growth. And that to me is something that I can't, I can't think enough and I can't be more grateful for. Um, so if you guys are wanting to do this experience, I encourage it. Um, I encourage you to do as many experiences as you can because it's, it's life changing and it's amazing. And I, I can't thank enough everyone, even for the many groups and everything after it that they provide is support with like-minded individuals that I honestly, I, I'm, I'm so filled with happiness and so much gratefulness in my heart that there's no dictionary to describe this kind of stuff, but I hope that I was able to, you know, put it into a little part of, um, a testimony for you guys and explaining it as the best I could. I love you all. It's been uh, a wonderful two days, emotional, and I just had to take a couple days to process it all because it just seemed, but it was very, very um, intense and it was a wonderful journey to be on, that's for sure. There's two reasons for me that, that hurdles that I kind of had to take. Um, excuses right we make up excuses um for ourselves and um whatever they are i don't have the money i don't have the time um it's not the right time for me or i can do it on my own whatever uh you have those excuses and you go back and forth in your own head and um the other thing was that i i thought i could do it alone that i needed what i really needed was i needed help and i i actually came face to face with that and so those two kind of things came to a head plus talking to Nikki and Corey I decided what what can I lose really right so you go back and forth in your own mind and at least I do talk to myself too much so I took the, faith, the leap of faith and I went and I took the, cor the two-day course and I am so proud and happy for myself that I did um, it took me, like I said, a couple days to process it all because it was so intense and um, just the collective. It's a, it's such a safe, um, loving, um, protected place to be. You don't have to be afraid. And if you're, we're on the fence, walk, going back and forth like I was. I recommend that you just. Just do it. It's a gift for yourself. The support, the love, that's exactly what I needed. I needed to have someone to tell me that, you know, I'm worth it and that I'm not alone, that there's other people out there on the same journey has have the same feelings as well. Thank you so much for just being there. It's amazing. Love you. I'm trying to put into words the experience that I had which is actually quite difficult. I went on a journey for the best part of it. Um, Guy and Alan are very, very good at guiding people. And obviously within this event, there was you know around 50 odd people all sharing this experience with me, which created a very powerful um, energy field. And as they were guiding us and they were then uh, to get people to understand and help you understand uh, certain aspects of yourself we are multi-dimensional beings um we live in multiple realities at the same time and i think what happens is we get pulled into this reality you know as, as beautiful as it is well through our senses um and that isn't every reality there is lots of other areas that for us to explore and guy and Alan are very good at guiding you 
to open up these different pathways, these different uh, realities. So for me personally, deeply connected to the earth, I felt almost just part of the energy field of the earth at times. I was connected to what I can only describe as beings of light, um, which were coming to visit me. Um, you know, even maybe ancestral parts of my ancestry. And uh, that was very a very powerful experience. And even beyond that, you know, I was viewing the Earth from the Moon. Um, there was a lot of a lot of visuals for me, um, and I found it very very powerful to hear everyone else's story as well and every everyone else's experience. Should I say? Um, you know, there was a lot of people. They were opening up parts of themselves that maybe hadn't been open for a very long time, and there was a lot of healing going on. And I found that absolutely amazing. I think for me personally, what I can bring from and what I've experienced and what Gynaland really helped with is we have a very busy reality. You know, we live very, very fast lives. Um, we, have, we have been conditioned or conditioned ourselves to live like this. Everything moves at quite a, quite a fast pace, including our thoughts now. Um, I don't think it's always been like this, in fact, I know it hasn't always been like this. And so what this really helps you do is just take in the, the stillness of everything. And it allows you to really sink in and just allow that stillness to be. And that is by far the most powerful thing I took from this experience. And I think many others would do as well. And if you haven't been on it, I would definitely recommend going on it, 100%. Like I say, it's hard to put into words the experience. So I didn't know what to expect from the two-day Intuitive Mind event. And um, honestly, I was a little bit anxious about spending that much uninterrupted time just focused on me. Um, but I'm so glad that I followed my intuition and participated because it far exceeded any expectations that I could have conceived before. Um, not only was the event itself powerful and transformative, but now it's four days later and I have received daily more downloads, information, um, just insights that have been really special. There's been a new level of calm and peace and just trust in my body system since the event and that alone is priceless. I can't wait for more events. I think Guy and Elon are so knowledgeable and supportive and, um, you know, I can't wait to continue this beautiful journey with you. Thank you so much for the work that you do. I love you um, and you're really making the world a better place. So thank you. I, I pondered over doing this, trying to work out how do I explain what just happened. The, the first thing, I guess for me, uh, a lot of the energy workshops I've done uh, is generally with women. It's generally, uh, it's not unheard of that I go to events and there's me and 19 other women at these events, held space by women. I just seem to be more attracted to, I guess, the feminine, if you want to, if you need a word. Um, or there's just not a lot of men going to these type of workshops. Uh, I never knew, I just go along. These two ha have cultivated within themselves the ability to hold gentle loving space um, and from from a big hearted man like me that to me is priceless in itself there's a there's a little bit of a a finding home and for a weekend where i did fuck all there was just space just To feel the transformation on the spot of people in the group from an energetic perspective, not from the words that they spoke perspective, I loved. What brought me to the event was just a, I'd only followed these guys, I stumbled across them, I've only followed them for a couple of months. Um, and just went, well, oh, that feels all right, I'm not going to do that. Did I have some resistance after that decision? Of course, that's, I did. You know, what am I doing? A couple of fucking randoms on the internet, shit. Um, I have a little gullible piece, so I, you know, I'm very wary of being taken advantage of. Yeah, so 
for, for you, it's a feeling. It's a feeling. It's not an intellectual decision. If you're making an intellectual decision, it might not be right for you. There is changes that are possible. You just need to put your hand up. I've been on my self-development journey for five years now, and I have always had problems to sustain the energy in my body due to physical pains that I have. And these pains, they, they like feed the blockages that I have in my body. So um, falling into mind and stress and self-sabotage over and over again. Um, yeah, for me, it's just inevitable because I never really could hold that, um, that um, foundation inside, you know, that was missing for me. And uh, when I heard that guy in Ilan uh, had a live event coming up and um, somebody invited me, uh, if I wouldn't like to join because that was exactly what I was looking for to get unstuck in my energy and unstuck in self-sabotaging myself so my mind went a bit awire because I had a work weekend uh, that weekend and I didn't really have the financial means to join so uh, I thought it over and I went to my boss and I was able to switch my work weekend around and I lent the money from my husband and um, yeah I could attain, uh, attend so because I knew not not going was you know, just something when it feels right, you've got to, you've just got to get that. And that's what, uh, what that event was for me. And uh, during this event, what happened for me was, um, I've never felt something like that before. Nearly at the end of the event, when we were invited to join an exercise, it just released a, a wave of ugliness and shame inside myself that flooded out me. I could see and feel all that that blame, I, everything just flooded out. And what I realized was that I just forgave myself and I didn't know that that was a work that I still needed to do. And when that happened, um, it was as if my solar plexus just opened up when all the wave of ugliness and shame went outside my body. I can't explain it any, um, any otherwise. And I couldn't grasp these feelings that happened over the two days, but it, it was as if my body and soul were getting ready to release all that. So I didn't understand it, but my body already and my soul knew what was happening to me. And um, it was just amazing that everything inside myself knew that I couldn't carry those and handle those feelings anymore. So at the end of that exercise, everything that blocked me was just gone. And it was always as if my solar plexus was pushing me down and now it is as if I have a strong person inside myself like the strong energy that that opens up I, I don't know how to explain that and it's just a feeling like oh god um, even just expressing my 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 feelings on camera like this or being vulnerable um, it's just nothing that I've ever done so this is really new to me and it's it's um, I'm, I'm nervous but it's it's already it's also exciting to just be able to do this and and not hide underneath my my stomach anymore and just being pushed away so it's um yeah it's, it's fantastic uh, and these are really exercise and tools that a guy uses that guy use that everybody can learn it's, i think it's always been so overcomplicated to to get in touch with your feeling inside that a lot of people are afraid to do that and uh, i just went in open-minded and it's i just believe everything is possible now you know it's just yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It's really fantastic. I've never felt more like myself than I do today. So really, I appreciate you guys, Elan. Thank you so much for the work that you two are doing with this beautiful community. And I just can't wait for the next live event to happen. So until we see each other again, all the best to you. And thank you. Thank you very, very much for just setting me free and yeah, just making me smile the whole day. It's, it's fantastic. Thank you. I walked in with an open mind and um, what I walked out with was a lot more than that. I walked out with an open heart, an open mind and a whole new experience and it was so worth it. A life changing experience I could call it that. I've never felt that way before. I have read many books, I have taken some courses. I have been working on my personal development and uh, I found uh, the weekend has uh, changed me forever. Uh, I felt at peace, I felt secure, I felt safe, I felt loved and I felt completely tranquil 
and it's still and it was an amazing 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 experience uh, providing a very safe comfortable loving supportive environment they constantly reassured us they were there to support us and uh, we could feel that and i thank you thank them so much for that i felt like i was flying high that day uh the the point that i had reached through those two days in my experience in my meditations i have never reached that level before also the people that attended in the group everyone was amazing such great experiences uh, gave you so much perspective, insights on what everyone is experiencing and how we can, you know, help support each other, learn from each other, and also build friendships uh, in the Facebook group that we have. Uh, that is a wonderful thing. Um, I'm checking it every day and uh, it's, it's just amazing the amount of beautiful souls out there and I highly recommend this and I hope and uh, hope you to come and join our live experience once again and and see what it's all about and you too will see that it is life-changing and I thank you all and I hope to see you there